I'm Anil Kumar. In this video, we'll try to understand how to write polar equations from rectangular equations. So we, our concentration here will be to write some rectangular equations, right? So we'll do rectangular equations will be written as polar equations. The reason for doing this is that we understand rectangular equations, right? So we have in our mind, if I write an equation, you know exactly this is the equation of a line, this is the equation of a circle and so on. And if we are in a position to translate rectangular into polar equation, you will know how will that graph look like when represented in a polar equation form, right? That's the whole idea. So what do we need to do this? First is in rectangular, we have x and y. In polar, we are talking about uh, r and theta, right? So we are converting our x and y's to r and theta. That is the basic concept. Where x is equals to r cos theta, y is equals to r sine theta, r square is equals to x square plus y square. And uh, we could also say tan theta is ratio of uh, y and x. So these are basic relations which should help us to do this transformation of uh, rectangular to polar equations, right? So let's begin by taking a few very simple examples. Uh, let us say we have a line which is uh, x equals to a. If I write x equals to a, then what does it mean? Or if I write, uh, uh, let's say y equals to b, let's say. So what does it mean? Now, this is x equals to a, means equation is a rectangular equation. x equals to a for us uh, represents a straight line which is vertical in nature, right? So let me sketch these lines here. So we'll plot a graph here. So x equals to a, when I say, it means that it's a vertical line, right? So rectangular system, we get a vertical line, and that is how it is. Is that okay? A vertical line where each and every point is, is at x equals to a, correct? So that is when we are talking about a rectangular system, for example. Now, how do I convert this to polar system? Well, that should not be very difficult. As you see, x is r cos theta. So we could write this as uh, r cos theta equals to a, right? Does it make sense to you? So when I say r cos theta is a, that means we are talking about a is any number, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, any number. So r cos theta is constant. If I say that, so this is a polar equation. The variables r and theta, right? And this is a constant. That should represent a vertical line. Does it make sense to you, right? So it does. So on a polar scale, the only change here is we are talking about a polar axis instead of x and y. So that becomes the polar axis and this becomes the pole for us. However, the line remains the same. So it's a vertical line which can be represented as r cos theta equals to a in polar equation form. Does it make sense to you? Okay, let's take another example. y equals to b, y is r sine theta. I can replace y with r sine theta. Is it okay? Equals to b. Now both these are representing the same things but in different systems, right? So what is y equals to b? y equals to b you know, is a horizontal line with y-intercept of b, right? So this is a horizontal line. Okay, now for this particular horizontal line, in polar system, we have an equation which is r sine theta equals to b. Do you get the idea? So that's what we are trying to see, right? We're trying to just relate Cartesian plane with our polar plane, right? So this is the polar axis now, that's the pole. And b units of a. It could be 1, 2, 3, any number. And the equation will be r sine theta equals to a constant b, right? So in our example, a, b are real numbers. 
Okay, so let's move on with another very interesting line, which is uh, which is a line. Let me sketch the line this time first. Okay, and then we'll write down the equation, right? So let us say we have a line which is going through the origin, right? So let's say this is the line, right? I'm purposely not taking a 45 degrees angle. I could have taken that also, but let's be general, right? So in this case, we have a line which is y equals to mx, right? Where m is the slope, where n is the slope. Now let us see how to convert this into polar form. So when we're talking about polar form, we have a pole here and that is the polar axis and uh, we're looking into an angle from here, right? Let's say this angle which the line makes is alpha. Now in that case, what is the slope? To find the slope, we have to take a point here, drop the perpendicular. So this distance, let's say point is x, y. This is y and this is x, correct? Let us say, right? Then tan alpha is the slope. So now we know m equals to tan alpha. Is that okay? In this particular sketch, is that okay? For the given line. So what we can do here is we can write y over x is equals to m, which is, we you know, tan alpha. Now, what is y over x? y over x is tan theta. So y over x can be written as tan theta. So we have tan theta equals to tan alpha. Now that should be equation in polar form, kind of. We could write this as uh, theta equals to alpha, right? If tan theta equals to tan alpha, then theta equals to alpha. So if theta equals to alpha, we get this line, which goes through the origin. Do you understand? So a line passing through origin could be written as theta equals to alpha. A vertical line is r cos theta equals to a, horizontal line is r sin theta equals to b, and any oblique line going through the origin can be represented by theta equals to alpha. It makes sense, right? Theta alpha angle is constant. So R can vary. So if you look into from polar equation point of view, in that case, what we are saying is angle remains constant, R can change. Do you see that? So R can change. It could be zero, negative, positive, whatever. So the points will lie on a straight line going through the origin. So that is the concept. I hope you are getting this and like, I hope you appreciate it, right? Let me take one more example before we leave this video, uh, which is circle x square plus y square equals to r square, right? So let's let's write down a value this time. Let us say 2 square. Okay, so instead of general, I've just written a value 2. I could have written a or b anyway. Now, circle x square plus y square equals to 2 square can be sketched very easily here, uh, kind of two units away. Is it okay? So two units away, we have a circle here. Okay, that's fine. Not so good, but not bad either. So the radius is 2, that's the origin, and that's the equation of a circle in rectangular coordinate system, right? How do we write this equation in polar form? Well, x square plus y square is what? Direct substitution. You know, we didn't do much. We just substituted these values, so we get r square equals to 2 square, and that gives you r equals to 2 r equals to 2 is a polar equation, right? Now, that means what? That means that from the pole, each and every point is 2 units away, right? Well, that makes sense. On a circle, each and every point is 2 units away, right? Magnitude, right? That's fine. So each and every point is 2 units away. So that is how we get a circle in the polar system. Do you get it? So it is as simple as that. Just using these basic equations, we can easily convert rectangular equations into polar equations, right? We'll take up more intricate examples in the coming videos, but here I think you get a gist of it, right? Now, here is a big question for you. Question for you. Now we have written R equals to two, right? Which you see is a circle, is it okay? Now the question is, in polar system, I should say polar equations, okay, 
is r equals to 2 a function that is the question for you it is a million dollar question the question here is r equals to 2 in polar system is it a function or not that is what you need to answer think about it and thus that's a key to keep to a very big advantage of polar equations over rectangular equations. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope you learned from this video. You can always share and subscribe my videos uh, to learn. Thank you and all the best.